Hello everyone, I'm the Gaming Beaver and welcome to the top 10 dinosaurs in Jurassic World the game. I have been playing this game for what feels like an eternity, and for what turns out is actually only two years. And I've got loads of questions in the past asking me what I think the best dinosaur in the game is. So it's taken me this long and I thought I'd finally put together a top 10 list of what I personally think are the best dinosaurs in the game and of course that said, this is my own top 10 list. So these dinosaurs are in no way the best dinosaurs there are. Otherwise, it would be probably a very boring list just reading out the strongest. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting out our list relatively weak is actually Kool-Aid, also known as Kulasuchus. Now with 116 dinosaurs so far in the game, you might be asking, why is Coolasuchus already number 10 when there must be far stronger dinosaurs in the game than it? And yes, I know, technically it's not a dinosaur, so oh god, don't start commenting. It's actually a reptile that lived in the same period. I know! <laughs> So Coolasuchus is relatively cheap, clocking in at 610 DNA, a 467 health, and boasting a whopping 146 attack marks. These stats alone don't make it number 10 on the list. What makes it number 10 is the fact that you are going to get a lot of these Coolasuchuses. That means that maxing one up to level 40 is going to be relatively easy, and even selling them for 305 DNA isn't something to be sniffed at. But what puts it at number 10 is how useful it is. Once Coolasuchus has outstayed its welcome and you're moving on to stronger dinosaurs like Super Rares or even Legendaries, it can be hybridized with Sarcosuchus to make Coolasaurus. Don't even know where the Saurus comes from, they just sort of made that up. And if you max that guy to level 40, then you're starting to look at a very useful creature. It only costs about 20,500 DNA, has 3,864 health with 1,476 attack, making it a pretty strong hybrid. And if you've managed to get a lot of these cooler sutruses, then you can make a few of those without having to spend all of that DNA. And if there are certain missions that require you to have level 40 amphibians, then Kool-Aid could be a good alternative, allowing you to grind through the missions while also also working towards that target of Coolosaurus. At number 9 we have the queen herself, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. A legendary by all meaning of the word. Before any updates came out for Jurassic World the game in complete vanilla, T-Rex was the strongest legendary in the game. Before hybrids were even a thing, with 1,603 health and 612 attack, it made it pretty damn strong. And for the longest time, T-Rex was the best. But what could be better than T-Rex? That's right, what it could evolve into, and that is Indominus Rex. Going through the game myself, when I finally managed to get a level 40 T-Rex, the hybrids had almost just came out, allowing me to get an Indominus Rex straight away. Maxing out T-Rex is something that you're going to do, and in doing so, you're gonna get yourself an Indominus Rex anyway, which makes T-Rex a pretty useful dinosaur in terms of usability and putting you one step closer to the strongest dinosaur team in the game. At number eight, it's Triceratops. I know I could already hear you asking, how the frick can Triceratops be T-Rex in a list of the top 10 dinosaurs. I assure you it's not, it's 274 health with 70 attack. No, Triceratops has its usefulness in other areas. Now, not only are we talking about the strongest dinosaurs in the game, we're listing dinosaurs that are the best, not strongest. And Triceratops has its usefulness in early game. Of course, Triceratops is one of the first dinosaurs you get, and I 100% assure you, it's probably gonna be one of the first level 40s you get too. At this point in the game, putting a Triceratops in the hatchery basically means you get to get it for free instantly. Its hatching time is so short that it allows you to speed it up straight away. And if you have three Triceratopses ready to hatch, you've already done one of the daily missions, which means that you get 10 bucks for free. Awesome! But not only that, Triceratops allows you to boost through those missions that usually take forever. Anyone who's played this game for as long as I have still retains the scars of those missions that ask you to have five or six level 40 dinosaurs. And Triceratops, being one of the cheapest, allows you to surpass that mission with complete ease. Not only does Triceratops allow you to go through these missions at lightning speed, but it can also be hybridized with Stegosaurus to make Stegoceratops. And that dinosaur will help you through the mid game 
all the way. So Triceratops being placed on this list doesn't seem too stupid now, does it? No. <laughs> At number seven, we have what seems to be the complete opposite of Triceratops, and that is Segnosuchus. To date, the strongest herbivorous hybrid with 4,977 health and 4,666 attack, even against any carnivore, it has more attack than Indominus Rex at a whopping 2,333, meaning it can two-shot an Indominus Rex even with a nerfed attack. But all of this clout doesn't come cheap. The reason why Segnosuchus is so low on this list is the fact that it costs 51,240 DNA. So to get a level 40, it's a whopping 358,680 DNA. And not only that, to be able to obtain said Segnosuchus, you need to get Segnosaurus from one of the events. So unless you've managed to get it from that event, having a chance of getting this hybrid is very low. And speaking of attack that can beat Indominus, number six is Indominus Rex. The flagship of Jurassic World and of course the game, it had to appear in this list. Unfortunately, ever since hybrids have been introduced, Indominus Rex has been completely usurped by other stronger hybrids, placing it at only number six on this list. With 5,430 health and 2,074 attack, it's not as good as other hybrids. Back in the day when it was first released, it was technically the best, and costing a whopping 29,400 DNA at the time, it seemed like it couldn't be outdone. But Indominus Rex is actually one of the cheaper hybrids and better ones to get. As opposed to other legendary hybrids, which cost almost double that, you don't get that bad of a deal, actually. As much as I wanted to put Indominus Rex higher on this list, I really couldn't. So I apologize in advance. Coming in at number five is Prestosuchus. Something that Indominus Rex really doesn't want to come across. And no, that is not how I'm doing this list. Just one thing beats the other. Just a coincidence. Prestosuchus technically doesn't cost any DNA or really any resources to get. Ever since the introduction of VIP points, you can save them up and buy a solid gold pack which can earn you one of these dinosaurs. Or one of these creatures, sorry. VIP points are acquired by basically just opening packs or even doing the daily missions. And a level 40 Prestosuchus boasts a whopping 3,591 health as well as 1,870 attack at max. So how many VIP points could it cost to get a level 40 maxed Prestosuchus? Well, if you're incredibly lucky, it would only cost you 80,000 VIP points. Or if you, or <laughs> back in the day when solid gold packs only cost 5,000 VIP points, you could have got it for 40,000. Now at the time when VIPs were first introduced, Prestosuchus was the strongest amphibian in the entire game. All the thousands and thousands of DNA you had plowed into Super Kool-Aid or Coolosaurus would be completely usurped by Prestosuchus. Coolosaurus did have about 500 extra health, but Prestosuchus did have 300 extra attack and only two attacks on top of each other, and that's already over 700 extra attack. Of course, Prestosuchus isn't as good as it used to be. With the introduction of Ostoposaurus, as well as other VIP amphibians, it's sort of lost its luster, but it's still one of the strongest amphibians to date. Which brings us to number four, Pterodactylus, another VIP creature. Just like Prestosuchus, it technically doesn't cost any DNA, apart from, you know, the DNA to cost of, you know, evolve the creature in the books, maybe to speed it up, but technically no DNA at all. With slightly less health than Prestosuchus, it has 3,352, but with more attack, 1,945, as well as it being a flyer. This put it pretty high on my list. Pterodactylus, really didn't have any competition when it came to battles. When it comes to fighting each other, herbivores have been on the, the weaker side. And for the longest time, Pterodactylus has been able to hold its own against the majority of the herbivores. And as long as it has a carnivore on its team to back it up, there's really no stopping it. That was, of course, until the recent introduction of Segnosuchus, which is why Pterodactylus isn't higher on this list. This flying terror was originally just like Prestosuchus and only cost 5,000 VIP points. But unfortunately, the 
updates haven't been kind to Pterodactylus. It's been since removed from the solid gold pack and now you can only buy it for 50,000 VIP points. Meaning if you want to max up a Pterodactylus, it's now going to cost you 400,000 VIP points. If it hadn't have been included in the solid gold pack for so long, then it wouldn't have even made it on this list. But because it was, and because it's got amazing combat potential, it's here. But what could be better than Pterodactylus, I hear you say? Entering number three is your boy, the Carnoraptor. With 2,498 health and 954 attack, and for it just to be a rare, if you've watched my Let's Play series, you know that I think Conoraptor is one of the more underestimated dinosaurs in the entire game. Only costing 7,730 DNA, being a rare, its stats speak for itself. Its main competitor is a whole league above it, the Spinoraptor, which costs 9,520 DNA a pop, has 2,715 health and 1,037 attack. Which, yes, it costs more, it has more health and more attack, but it only has 217 extra health and 83 extra attack. And for 1,790 DNA more, you're really not getting anything for all that extra DNA. And the difference between maxing up a Carnoraptor and a Spinoraptor is 12,000. 530 DNA, almost another two Carnoraptors. While Spinoraptor and Tropogopterus received nerfs to their overall stats, Carnoraptor actually received a buff, making it one of the best bargain hybrids you can get to date. If you're just starting out the game or are even in the late game where I am, Conraft is a dinosaur you're gonna keep on using. A great dinosaur to take on anything mid game, and even useful late game for taking on any of the stronger hybrids. As long as it's not Gorgosuchus. And that's why Conoraptor gets the Beaver stamp of approval. Yeah! This takes us to number two Metrophodon. Or Met Metrophodon. I, I don't know how to say its name. The creature with the strong. A creature with the strongest attack of everything in the entire game and one of the better types with 5606 health and 5255 attack it's in a completely different league to everything else it's almost able to kill itself in one hit though and for the longest time it had no weakness the only thing that could possibly take it on as far as herbivores go was the ankylodocus but even then ankylodocus could only kill it in three hits Really, something with the type advantage should be able to kill it in about two hits. But all of this attack does come at a cost. And that cost is 62,160 DNA. Oh boy. So in order to get a max Metrophodon, you're looking at 435,120 DNA. And this creature was going to take my number one spot. However, the introduction to Segna Sutures bumped it down, as well as a discovery of another dinosaur. And that dinosaur is number one. I can already hear you asking, if Metrophodon has the strongest attack in-game, what could be number one? Well, how about a dinosaur that hasn't been released yet, but some lucky people out there have managed to get it. Number one, the best dinosaur in Jurassic World the game has to go to Udon. That's right. As of recording this video, Udon hasn't been released yet. And when people first managed to get it in the game, its stats were actually horrendous. But due to a recent buff, Udon has become what I can only speculate as to one of the most expensive dinosaurs in the game and the best. At max level, Udon has 14,077 health, as well as 4,399 attack. As far as carnivores go, they never really have the lion's share when it comes to health. But in Udon's case, he kind of turns that around. The only other carnivore that can come close to that kind of health is Erlophosaurus at 9,690 health. And Udon almost has double that. Erlophosaurus also has 2,238 attack, and Udon, again, almost doubles that too. At the moment, its DNA cost is a mystery, but with these stats, we can almost guarantee it's gonna be the most expensive dinosaur in the game. Probably putting Metrophodon's 62,160 DNA to shame. And with that much health, it's almost impossible for any creature to kill it within two hits, including Metrophodon. 
And any dinosaur that can't be killed by anything else, including itself in two hits, has to be placed at number one. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that list. I mean, Triceratops had to make it in there somehow, and I think I gave it a good reason as to why it made it in there. And if there's a dinosaur you think I've missed that should have made it on this list, leave it in the comments below. And until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!